So this is the uh, underneath side of the uh, engine. Um, <clears throat> this uh, little uh, circuit board here is the uh, uh, that's the uh, capacitive discharge ignition circuit. It basically takes the uh, uh, three volts or so from the battery power supply and uh, generates a high voltage to uh, uh, fire the spark plug. This is the uh, high tension lead right here, this black little black wire here that goes to the spark plug. Um, <clears throat> this big silver uh, piece of aluminum here is simply a, a grounding bar, bus bar, that connects the cylinder assembly to the uh, crankshaft, flywheel, etc. assembly. So they're all connected to ground through that particular bar, so that's the ground bar. Um, <clears throat> these three leads here uh, go to uh, up here it goes to a hall sensor on the camshaft, which is a magnet on there that triggers <clears throat> the uh, circuit to fire. So this electronic circuit is driven by that hall sensor, and that hall sensor, uh, when it gets the signal, this thing turns on and fires the spark plug. <clears throat> so that's, uh, I think, pretty much it for the electronics on the underneath side. So this is the uh, crankshaft and the camshaft. Uh, this, uh, this rod here is actually the crankshaft, and as you can see, it uh, connects to the uh, connecting rod back here. And uh, this small gear here is what drives the camshaft gear, which this is the camshaft in here. Uh, two to one ratio, so that the camshaft turns at half the speed of the crankshaft. Um, <clears throat> this over here is the push rod that actuates the exhaust valve. There is a lobe on the camshaft here, which as you rotate it, you can see that lobe comes around and activates that uh, push rod to open the exhaust valve. Uh, this set of wires coming up through here goes to the ignition circuit and in this plastic uh, sleeve here, there is a hall sensor which is connected to those wires. In that aluminum disc there, there is a small neodymium magnet. And as that magnet turns, you can see it turns with the camshaft, as that turns it, and passes the magnet, or passes the hall sensor, it sends a signal to the uh, ignition circuit underneath to fire the spark plug. This screw sticking up out of the top here allows you to rotate this sleeve back and forth, and that basically lets you set the timing. Um, moving it to more of a vertical position it, uh, advances the timing, and moving it down more horizontal uh, retards the timing. I actually see, think it's better to run it so that it fires a little bit either on or past dead center, which would be considered kind of slow timing. But the whole objective of this engine is to run pretty slow, so uh, that's the reason I like to run it slow. I like to run it retarded. You see a couple of uh, holes here. There's one there and one there. Those are basically oil holes. Put a couple of drops of oil in each one of those to oil the crankshaft. I also usually put a couple of drops of oil on the um, gears here to lubricate them before I start it up. Then there's a uh, I don't think you can see it here, but there's also an oil, there's also a hole, there's a hole right there in the um, camshaft that you can put a drop of oil in there and that'll oil the camshaft and put a drop or two of oil in there every now and again. Um, back here on the back of the flywheel, you see there's a couple of big neodymium magnets here. There's one, two on this side and two on the other side on either side of the flywheel. Those are basically uh, kind of uh, brake magnets or drag magnets. They induce a lot of small current in the flywheel it's through eddy currents and because of the magnet, the strong magnetic strength and the iron rim. Uh, so that acts as a kind of a drag on the flywheel to give it a little bit of a load. The engine runs better if it's under uh, a little bit of a load. This is the uh, carburetor. You can see it has a 
fuel line that runs from the gas tank here up to uh, this little connector on the bottom of the carburetor. This silver knob here is the throttle. Uh, and so turning it clockwise decreases the uh, RPMs and turning it uh, counterclockwise increases. I usually like to run it at about one quarter open, so go all the way to close. Don't force it. Don't force it or you uh, will hurt the, the seat in the carburetor. But if you open it just to where it stops turning, then open it about a quarter of a turn. Of course, you can open it more than that if you want to go faster. This uh, knob up here is the fuel mixture. It, uh, it, it uh, adjusts the ratio of air to fuel, uh, making it leaner or richer. There's a little uh, witness mark on top of that knob, and when it's facing toward the engine, that's full off. Uh, to start the engine, uh, you want that about three quarters open or have it pointing toward directly towards the throttle valve um, <clears throat> Down here you can see this hole in the side of the carburetor there. That's the air intake and There's a little piece of a brass tubing Wrapped around that with a slit in the side and if you turn that You see like that that closes that as you turn that further and further it closes off that hole so this acts as a choke so when the engine is cold and you want to start it even if it's slightly warm and you want to start it you want to turn that this way so it completely closes off that hole there's no opening in the end here at all so that shuts off all the air to the engine and gives it a really rich mixture to get it started uh, we'll come back to the starting procedure uh, a little bit later on in the video but that's completely open and of course you can run it anywhere in between there as you need to to uh, make the mixture richer or leaner or you can use this knob up here this one is uh, a little more sensitive so it sometimes is uh, better to use that so back here is the cooling tank you uh, when you run the engine you want that to be full of coolant up above this line here so you want the coolant to come up to oh a quarter half inch from the top it needs to be above this line here because uh, this is the water return line down here you can see the water feed line so uh, as the engine gets warm the coolant in the sit which is in the cylinder jacket surrounding the main cylinder as that gets hot from running Convection currents are set up so the water tends to rise up this pipe through here and into the top of the tank and it draws cool water into the bottom Through this bottom pipe and into the bottom of the cylinder So it's important to have the water level above this so the convection cycle can circulate the water and uh, Keep the cylinder cool uh, while it's or relatively cool while it's running uh, I found that as long as you have coolant in here uh, the right amount of coolant. You can run this engine essentially forever and it won't overheat. Uh, the cooling system is uh, pretty effective. So the engine runs on a, a fuel oil mixture to lubricate the upper cylinder components, the valves and the uh, upper part of the piston and cylinder. Uh, I use Coleman Lantern fuel, which I buy at Walmart. It's probably this is a gallon can probably costs 10 12 bucks for a gallon of it That'll last you forever um, And for lubrication I use uh, my old friend WD-40 I mix it up in this uh, container here and I usually just put like a you know a couple of a couple of small squirts in there Not much at all um, <clears throat> And then uh, just, uh, I don't fill this full. I usually just put enough in there for a couple, enough to run it a couple of times. Um, well, this isn't going to work very well. Let's uh, come around on the other side so that I'm more... Kind of making a mess here. So that's plenty of fuel for two or three runnings. 
and this stuff is kind of volatile, so it'll let evaporate pretty quick. Now you can use, I can use gasoline in this engine, but uh, gasoline burns kind of dirty and uh, smelly, so it'll it'll you know it'll it'll gunk up the engine pretty quickly, and you'll need to clean it off, clean the valves out and stuff because it'll carbon car get carbon build up and everything in there. This is basically naphtha. This Coleman fuel is naphtha, and it. Uh, it burns pretty clean and it doesn't smell offensive, so it's just a much better choice as far as I'm concerned on uh, what to use when running this engine. And you can see on the back of the tank, there's a sight glass, a clear glass uh, section on the back of the tank so you can see how much fuel is in there. That is actually a uh, surplus watch crystal, uh, pocket watch crystal probably. I bought a bunch of those on eBay. and. That's just uh, super glued on the end. It does leak just enough, the, not, the, not that you can see any pooling or puddling or anything like that, but if you leave fuel in there over the course of 24 hours or so, it'll empty itself. Um, so I usually just put enough fuel in there to run for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes which means I don't usually put more than, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch in the bottom of the tank. You know, that's uh, that's plenty for a pretty long run and uh, it won't, uh, you won't be wasting a lot of fuel through evaporation this way because, you know, whatever you don't use will, will evaporate out of there and uh, you'll lose it. There is a vent hole in the top of that screw, by the way, that cap, by the way, so that, as it uses the fuel, it can get fresh air in there for the venting. And you can see the fill line right there. I've only got a little, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little over in there. So to uh, start the engine, you need to go through a little bit of a checklist. First of all, make sure that uh, you've got plenty of coolant in the um, cooling tower there. Make sure it's above the level of this line. Um, Put a couple of drops of oil in the uh, little oil holes here on the uh, crankshaft, on the gear, camshaft, and bearing. <coughs> um, <coughs> then uh, you want to make sure that the uh, mixture is set at about one full turn open. The throttle, you want to be uh, about a half a turn open <coughs> and you want to be sure that the choke sleeve is completely covering up the hole on the front of this carburetor here so that the slot on the sleeve is facing up. <coughs> the, the mixture setting, the needle valve that adjusts the mixture is very sensitive so you have to try that in very small increments one direction or the other to get it started. You're, <clears throat> you're probably not going to flood the engine when it's cold, so better to have a rich mixture than a lean mixture. <clears throat> and finally, uh, flip the switch on, on the battery box here. On is towards you. And flip the flywheel, Let's get her started. Uh, the engine is a little finicky and sometimes it takes a few turns to try to start it. I see we're getting a little smoke out of here, so we're going to turn the choke so that it's partially uncovering that hole. Okay, I'm opening up the choke a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and there the choke is fully open. Now this engine wasn't totally cold, so it doesn't, the mixture didn't need to stay rich for very long. Now I'm going to adjust the needle valve. You hear it's misfiring. So I'm going to start closing the needle valve by turning it clockwise, very slowly. I'm listening to see if it starts hitting more regular and speeding up. Now you can see I've got it about seven eighths of a turn open. And there it's approaching three quarters open. 
and that's right at about three quarters. That's the, spit, that's the settings that it likes to run best at. <laughs> now that's running pretty fast, so we can start closing down the throttle a little bit at this point. And I'm doing that by turning it clockwise. And I'm leaning up the mixture as I do that. As you slow down the throttle, you often have to lean up the mixture some. Very sensitive. about 60, I'm going to say about 60% about open. It's setting on about 4 o'clock, looking down on it from the top. Now by fiddling around, you can get it to run slower. Every time you adjust the throttle, you have to play with the mixture a little bit. Um, and after it gets good and warm, it's a little easier to do that. This manifold heats up pretty quickly because the exhaust valves are going, the intake is bringing gas fuel through here into the manifold, but the exhaust gases are coming back out through that same manifold, so it tends to heat up pretty quickly. <clears throat> so that's basically how you start the engine. To turn it off, you just turn the switch off. Now, to restart it at this point, you may have to give it a little bit, you may have to richen it up a little bit. Let's just turn it back on and try it. No, I guess it'll restart without changing the mixture at all. But if it cools down even slightly, you may have to unscrew the idle, the threading, the, the mixture uh, needle valve in order to richen it up. So that's running just about perfect. Well, close. You can see the intake valve working in there on the vacuum. clock on that lever is just about right.